Welcome to the Onesh Value Train. Hope you're excited to go out into outer space and follow your dreams. And as far as our opening hand goes, we've got Double Island, we've got Mana Crypt. Yeah, I like this. We've got Mana Drain, which is, feels like a pretty good option. So, uh, let's get Onesh pop back up. This is uh, pretty much exactly what we want to see. And I guess we just lead off with Manamo? That'll be alright. Yeah, I should lead off with Manamo, and then uh, anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn over to our opponent. We're playing Unesh, the uh, driver of the uh, value train. And also, before this video gets started, I would like to thank all of you for deciding to use the Unesh value train as your uh, flying source into outer space and to follow your dreams. And, you know, it means a lot to Unesh and I. You know, we are a small uh, flight business, dream following, outer space trip company and for you to choose us that makes a big difference so uh we just wanted to say thank you so we're playing unesh the official driver in yeah, look at unesh he lacks posable thumbs um but uh, he's driving a value train into space where you're encouraged to follow your dreams so uh, you can do whatever you want be whoever you want to be uh flying whenever uh, sphinx spells you cast cost two less to cast then whenever unesh or another sphinx enters the battlefield under your control factor fiction for four uh put those into two piles we get to put one pile in our hand the other pile goes into our graveyard and let's see our opponent didn't up taking our mana crypt off of that Inquisition of Kozilek. So uh, let's have Island come down and then uh, pass the turn over to our opponent. So playing as Lazoff, the Multifarious. Um, whenever Lazoff enters the battlefield, surveil for one. And then for an activated ability X, Lazoff becomes a copy of target creature card in your graveyard. Uh, preordained. Okay, sorry. I hit auto yield and I got really worried that our opponent was going to go for another piece of hand disruption. <laughs> so I was trying to make sure we leave up mana drain. Um, but yeah, uh, Lazoff becomes a copy of another target creature uh, in your graveyard with very Mekos X, except it's still Lazoff, it's legendary, and it has this ability. So uh, we did cover both commanders. Let's give a quick shout out to our sponsors, MTGO Traders. If you want to ride first class on the Inesh Value Train, head over to MTGO Traders. We've got uh, some tickets set up. Or if you want to ride at the Caboose, if you want to ride on the outside of the train, wherever you want to ride, hey, as long as you're following your dreams, it's going to make Unesh happy and make me happy. But yes, make sure you get your seating assignments at mtgotraders.com. Also, shout out to inkgaming.com. You can use coupon code JOLT to get 10% off anything off the website. So if you haven't treated yourself in a long time, make sure that you do. And uh, we're going to pass the term. I'm pretty much going to be going for this mana drain um, at anything that points... <laughs> Anything that just goes on the stack, we're going to hit this mana drain with it because uh, we need to go for this time twister. All right, opponent's going to go for Gataxian Probe. <sighs> yeah, that's, yeah, I think we'd go for it. Yeah, because we need that mana for Time Twister. I don't really want our opponent to see that we got Time Twister on the way. But yeah, check out InkGaming.com. And last but not least, I started a Patreon. So if you'd like to contribute to the Patreon, there's a link down in the description below. Get your name at the beginning or the end of the credits to help support cool content like this. And please don't have hand disruption. And uh, if you can't support the channel, then hey, uh, just tell somebody about the channel. I, I would greatly appreciate that. Um, that's how you can do uh, your part to help. So there we go. It's officially free time. Um, let's have some Oh, they do. Dang it. I was going to go for this time twister yeah if this time twister doesn't stick oh let's see because they might want a time twister. i know they take time twister okay all right so now we're in a pretty bad spot um with last off we'll see what I, this is liliana the veil oh my goodness this is not going to be good for us at all <laughs> we'll see now we are playing against the boogeyman i, I should uh, reference this that um the boogeyman um, plays a, a competitive commander, especially 1v1. And so um, a lot of uh, his or her decks are very, very cutthroat. And so um, Unesh, you know, there's times where Unesh can get off to a pretty good start. So that's kind of why I decided to do Unesh versus the uh, Elazov. But you can see our opponent, they're uh, getting some good stuff going. So uh, anything else, we're going to go and pass it over to our opponent. So unfortunately, with us not going for that mana crit, oh, I just almost auto yielded through the turn. So we can still. We can Frexian Metamorph with that one extra mana, but that's going to be about it. There's no artifacts for us to choose. Um, I guess we just make a copy of Blazoff. We can Surveil. I mean, that's some card advantage. <laughs> it's better than nothing. Uh, so while Frexy and Metamorph into the battlefield, have, they have it become a copy of Lazov. And uh, we'll get that Surveil from one. At this point, we're just looking for a land, and that is a land. It's a tap land, but it is a land. And so um, we'll go and pass the turn over to our opponent. So 
we have dueling Lazovs at this point right now, and then I will kick it back over there. So, uh, but yeah, it's officially free time. We can have some fun. But with the Boogeyman, um, he or she uh, plays a lot of highly competitive 1v1 list, and so I just wanted to kind of see what the Unesh value train could do against it. But um, yeah, when you get hit with the Inquisition and Thoughtseize in, in 1v1 Commander, um, that is pretty rough because that is um, some very, very good early hand disruption. Um, with Mana Crypt, we could have powered it out there a little bit quicker, uh, maybe I should have, especially knowing against our opponent's type of build. But, um, you know, there's sometimes where you get Mana Crypt out there pretty quick. And, you know, next thing you know, you're just taking a bunch of damage. So that's kind of... Uh, just see what can happen. So we got Lazoff swinging in for one. Is it probably go for a chip shot? No, we'll let that go on through. I... <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to get hit with a random. All right, Pota's going to go for Entomb. Okay, we should have cleared blockers on this one. Phyrexian Dreadnought. Okay, this is... <laughs> Either way, that's going to be trample damage. Let's see, we've got that. I think uh... I think they're going to get it on this one. Because that, that's them swinging in next turn. Yeah, good game. Got this one. Uh, we're going to scoop this one up because we got Lonely Sandbar. And, uh, yeah, that Frexian Dreadnought is uh, going to get it. So, hey, if you enjoyed your time on the Unesh Value Train, like and subscribe. All right, bye. Welcome to Alila, Tezzeret's Pawn. And as far as our opening hand goes, yes, we're going to keep on this one. I love it. We've got uh, three lanes in our hand. We have a tutor. We have Talisman, Utter End, and a little bit of card advantage in Ponder. So we'll definitely keep on this. Um, let's go ahead and go for Windswept Heath. Let's go ahead and grab ourselves a blue source. And then I will go for Ponder and see what we can kind of dredge up for to hopefully make Alila happy. So let's grab this uh, Tundra. Yeah, that'd be a good option. So we're going to grab Tundra. Um, let's go for Ponder. A look at the uh, top three cards of our library. That's going to be Weir of Invention, Buried Ruin, and Tezzeret Master of Metal. Um, so that's going to put us at, if we don't shuffle, and that's going to be three lands, four talisman. You know, I, I think that's a uh, lose life equal to the number of artifacts. Do we really want Tezzeret that bad? Weir is a really good uh, card in this matchup. We also do have Enlightened Tutor. You know, let's just go and hold on to this. I feel like this is a pretty good option. So um, let's go for, let's put uh, Weir of Invention on top, Tezzeret, and then Buried Ruin. Not going to shuffle our library. It's actually not that bad. So um, anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn over to our opponent. We're playing a Leela. Tezzeret's Pawn, Flying, Death Touch, and Lifelink. Then other creatures you control with Flying get plus one, plus zero. Then whenever you cast an artifact or enchantment spell, create a woman blue fairy creature token with Flying. Playing gets Krinko, uh, Ten Street Hooligan, or Ten Street Kingpin, excuse me. Uh, whenever uh, Krinko enters the battle, no, excuse me, whenever Krinko attacks, put a plus one counter on it, then create a number of woman red goblin creature tokens equal to its power. And that does remind me I need to... Uh, they do play Krinko. It's been a long time since I've played that. Um, let's have Caves come down. And yeah, let's just go ahead and go for Talisman. I think that'll be pretty good. We still have Weir on top of our library. Um, that's going to allow us to finally grab Lattice. And I'll kind of explain why that's so important for this deck. So uh, we need to cover both commanders. Let's give a quick shout out to our sponsors, MTGO Traders. If you want to be one of the uh, the fairies that gets on the battlefield with the Leela, that gets turned into an artifact that makes Tezzeret happy, hey, Head on over to MTGO Traders. We're holding tryouts for fairies that can fly in the air. So if that's something that floats your boat, head over there. And uh, also, let's give a quick shout-out to InkGaming.com. You can use coupon code JOLT to get 10% off anything off the website. So if you uh, haven't treated yourself in a long time, make sure you do. Or you can actually type in JOLT539 in the search bar to see all of my playmats and t-shirts. And uh, last but not least, I started a Patreon. So if you'd like to contribute to the Patreon, there's a link down in the description below and get your name at the beginning or the ending of the credits to help support cool content like this. And if you can't do that hey no problem uh, just tell somebody about the channel so uh, we are definitely going to use this utter end on uh, Profros. this is something that we need to uh, get off the battlefield that's not going to be really good if this keeps sticking around so um, this will at least allow us to hopefully buy a little bit more time to find a board wipe to kind of stop this Krinko nonsense um, if Krinko is just getting goblins on the battlefield it's not that bad so um, anything else we're going to go and pass the turn over to our opponent um, one thing that we can do is we can actually go for a Leela and that's going to allow us to as we start to draw into more artifacts as we hit more enchantments um, that's going to allow us to kind of build up a token army and hopefully try to compete with this Krinko and so, um, but unfortunately with them swinging in every single time, um, that's going to be a lot of goblins. So we're going to try our best to make sure we can kind of slow the goblins down just a little bit. But, um, yeah, we did cover both commanders, cover sponsors. It is officially free time and let's have some fun.
But yeah, as far as um, this Alila build, if you haven't seen, I put out one video of Alila before this. Um, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's a lot of fun. But as far as what we're trying to do, this is definitely a very heavy artifact build. Um, of course, you want to get a lot of these fairies down on the battlefield. But one of the cool things that we are working with is we do have Lattice. And Lattice, Lattice of my something, I can't remember exactly what it is. But it's going to turn all of our, well, that's a lot of goblins. All right, so we definitely need to get a board wipe pretty soon. Otherwise, yeah, we're probably not going to survive. So, ooh, <laughs> we're running to damnation. Okay, uh, let's go Buried Ruin. I was trying to think about, I was like, man, what could we run into that would uh, that would really help out? And this is definitely it. So, um, let's go Buried Ruin. <laughs> let's go Damnation. Ooh, the magic gods are looking out for us. Um, let's still go and leave up Enlightened Tutor. All right, so we're going to go for Damnation. That's going to blow the entire board up. Um, that's going to buy us a little bit extra time. Because I was thinking, I was like, oh, man, we're going to have to scoop next turn. And uh, this is definitely going to help us out. So we'll see exactly what we're going to grab with um, Enlightened Tutor. One thing that we could do is we could actually go for Dark Steel Mutation. Um, that would be a really good option for us to make sure that Krinko, there's no funny business Lebowski if we put the uh, Dark Steel Mutation onto Krinko. So um, definitely want to give a big thanks to the Magic Gods for that. But yes, we get Lightest down on the battlefield with something like Weird Invention. And then once we get these Tesseret activations going, we have um, a lot of Tesserets in here. Uh, pretty much all the Tesserets that do matter, at least give us the option of doing that Tesseret Ultimate or that Tesseret kind of punch where it's, we're going to have our opponent lose life equal to the number of artifacts we control. And, uh, oh, please don't yield through. There we go. Okay, so let's go Enlightened Tutor. <laughs> I was like, uh, let's go Dark Steel Mutation. I, I think that's going to be the best bet that we can go for. We could go Oblivion Ring, but with Dark Steel Mutation, that's really just going to basically just uh, kind of keep that, uh, keep Krinko under control. So um, let's grab ourselves Dark Steel. Let's go and put that onto uh, Krinko. And we could try to just get down a Leela and to kind of get as much value out of this as possible. But um, at this point right now, we just actually just want to make sure we can keep those goblins off the battlefield. So um, anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn over there. Uh, but yeah, once we do get down the Tezzerts, uh, most of the Tezzerts have some variation of um, either lose twice the number of artifacts you control. You can really just kind of attack your opponent's life total. So one of the ways that you can really kind of make your deck really potent is by running Lattice in there. So once you get down Lattice, it's going to turn all of your permanents into um, artifacts and if you've had a pretty good Leela game where you have a Leela on the battlefield and you're casting different artifacts and stuff and you're getting those tokens and um, that's going to turn a lot of those tokens into artifacts which is really going to pump up your Tezzeret count and at the same time you know if you are pushing this Tezzeret Planeswalker game plan um that's one of those things that you can uh, kind of protect your your Planeswalker which is always a nice feeling and let's see what we draw into for the turn. It's going to be Temple of Silence. So um, but this is going to put us at six total mana for next turn. So let's do this. Let's just go and get the Scry going. The, the Fever. Let's get the Scry going. The Scurry. The Fever. Um, ooh, Thopter Foundry. Okay. And we are running two different combos in here. With Thopter Foundry, definitely going to put that on top of our library. In fact, let's go and get a Leela down on the battlefield. So it's going to be um, blue. Either way, we're going to have to take um, damage for this black mana. And then we'll tap down Buried Ruin. So let's have Alila enter the battlefield. Now with that Thopter Foundry on top of our library, one of the good things about that is that's going to allow us to really kind of start to get ahead on this life total. Um, especially when you're playing against an aggro deck and a deck like Alila or this kind of a Tezzeret build, you're going to be okay with you know your life total being used as a resource. So um, one of the ways that you can kind of help protect yourself from like a random like Goblin King into another... Goblin Tribal Lord that gives them all haste is to really kind of start working on getting some life gain back. And the Thopter Founder really does help us. Oh. Well, we have to search. So that was Scry. They put it on top. So they're going to pop one of our... Let's see what... what like, they pop Temple of Silence. So that's actually a pretty good option that they just went for. So let's grab ourselves... We'll grab ourselves a Swamp. Let's get into the battlefield untapped. Um, unfortunately, with that Temple of Silence, yeah, that's going to get rid of that. But we can still grab some other options with Weird Invention. Um, the only thing is we need to get up to that three blue mana count. So um, anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn over to our opponent. So um, if they don't really get any creatures down, we can actually just straight up just go for Tezzeret. And if we keep going for that plus one ability, eventually we're going to get to the point to where we can go for those minus three effects and uh, really start draining our opponent's life total. But um, with Leela on the battlefield, once we start rolling into some artifacts, hopefully we can get those tokens going, and that'll really help out. So let's see what our put. Pretty much, we've got Krinko on lockdown uh, with this Dark Steel Mutation. It's such a strong effect for 
Mog Infestation. All right, so we're going to end up with two goblins on the battlefield, which, you know, it's fine. We can get ourselves in the trenches with uh, Krinko over there. But I still think we probably just end up going Tezzeret. And um, we'll probably end up going for Leela after Tezzeret, but at least with Tezzeret, that's going to give us the option to get some artifacts down. So um, let's go Tezzeret. Let's go for the plus one ability. We're going to reveal cards from the top of our library until we hit an artifact card. And then Witching Well, that's a pretty good option. And uh, we'll have Academy Ruins into the battlefield and then anything else. We could swing in for two um, but at this point from the tezzer game plan um, i'd rather just have some sort of blockers until we have um a little bit more of a uh, uh board state developed on our side so uh, let's just go and pass the turn now with witching well this is a wonderful artifact for this card we get down to leela it kind of acts as almost kind of like a seer visions cantrip in a way i mean get it down you get that token you're gonna get that scry the scurry the fever times two which is the best kind to get and then uh, later on you can have that uh, four minute activation to draw two cards so you're gonna get some pretty good stuff and uh, once that does come down now opponent's gonna go for ooh. Very, very nice play from our opponent. Um, they went for Sword of Light and Shadow on Krinko uh, with Dark Steel Mutation to get rid of that aura. So that was uh, nice. That was a pretty good play. All right, so they're going to have protection from white and blacks. Now, we still have these goblins on the battlefield. And the good thing about Sword of Light and Shadow is that once we get down to Leela, that's going to allow us to keep these tokens on the battlefield. Um, we can kind of start to go for the minus three, but at this point, we need to... Uh, yeah, Krinko's going to be able to start swinging in, so we're going to have to get some stuff going. That damnation, I was thinking that Dark Steam Mutation was going to give us a ton of time. So they're going to be swinging in for a 3-4. Um, as long, Oh, man, that's a lot of goblins. Okay, uh, let's go goblin on Krinko. <laughs> This is uh, this has gotten very interesting very quickly. Um, all right, so let's see. We run into, ooh, Conclave Tribunal. Okay. It's not going to have haste, and let's make sure that we're doing this as, as efficiently as possible. So let's say that we go for a Leela. It's going to be six total mana, one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's going to give us one mana left over. We can at least tap down a couple more creatures. Um, let's go plus one on Tezzeret. We're going to reveal cards until we hit an artifact card, and let's see what we actually run into um, with this Tezzeret activation and then we'll see if there's any way we can potentially stabilize against uh, Krinko doing some stuff. Now, we can actually Weir of Invention for Executioner's Capsule, but we're kind of missing that uh, that last little blue mana. Oh, and there we go. We run into Executioner's Capsule. <laughs> That's a pretty good activation. Um, so let's go. Um, we'll go Alila. Now, if we actually go Alila, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and um, we're not going to have enough for an activation. So um, I think what we'll probably want to end up doing... Because I'd like to cash in as much value as possible going for that. So we can still end up blocking Krinko. Yeah, let's do this. So let's go for Alila. We're going to have Alila enter the battlefield. And then we could go for Witching Well. But that's not going to give us a body on the bat. Well, it'll give us a token down. And we can get Scry. And then I'll put us up for Executioner's Capsule for next turn. Yeah, I think that'll be good. So let's go for Witching Well. Um, this has been a pretty interesting game so far. Either way, win or lose, I'm pretty happy with how this has transpired so far. And this will also kind of set us up a little bit better for a Conclave Tribunal. Um, let's put um, Talisman of Progress on the bottom. Now let's see, so that's going to be Frexian Metamorph. Is there anything that we really want Frexian Metamorph to enter the battlefield as a copy as? We can't have it come in as a copy of Mana Crypt, but we're sitting at 10, which is uh, probably not going to be the best for us. Um, we could go Sword of Light and Shadow. Uh, that's going to allow us to gain some life. Yeah, I guess we'll just go and leave this on top because that talisman is going to help us progress just a little bit. That's going to give us an extra token down. And then that allows us to potentially weir for something else. And then I'll give that blue source that we need really bad. So um, let's just go and put both of these on top. Let's go for uh, Frexian Metamorph. Uh, let's put Talisman of Progress on top. And then uh, anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn. So we'll see how they do want to swing in. At this point right now, we're just looking at about four goblins, which is not too bad. Um... But they're going to be able to get a few more goblins on the battlefield, too, once they decide to swing in. So let's see how this turn kind of plays out for them. Now, if we run into something like Fumigate, um, if we can somehow rip into that, that... Ooh. Okay, so they're going to go for Chandra's Ignition. Oh, no, that's... Uh, that's pretty good. <laughs> so that's going to knock us down to two, and they're going to be able to swing in. And uh, close it out. So good game to our opponent. They're going to get it on this one. Unfortunately, we weren't able to uh, 
hold off Krinko long enough. That was a uh, pretty good game by our opponent. Definitely really nice being able to see that sort of light and show. <laughs> we got the lightning bolt for flavor. There we go. Good game to our opponent. They're going to be able to close it out on this one. Uh, probably should have gone for Executioner's Capsule uh, last turn, but I was thinking we could maybe get a few extra tokens down by trying to set up a turn with the Leela first. But uh, that probably would have been the better option if we actually did that. But if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.